I'm going to talk about a concept uh, that is a missing ingredient in a society that deserves more. If you want this country to really become a haven for entrepreneurship and innovation, you will need this element. And it may not be the cure-all, but without it, we will not get anywhere. We are not going to succeed without this element. And the element I'm talking about is competition. The power of competition. The power of competition to move things forward, to help us innovate, to create, and make a better world. What is the power of competition? Okay. I've tried to simplify it because, uh, well, if we're at the School of Economics, we probably have to come up with an econometric model or some kind of economic analysis to explain to you what competition is. I try to simplify it so we can also pass on the word about the importance of competition. The power of competition. Competition is the power of choice. Now, let's think of a very simple example. If I went to the grocery and I wanted to get a can of corned beef, and there was only one brand of corned beef. So I'm looking at the whole shelf, and I'm saying, what am I going to get? I think I'll get this one on the left. Okay? And the price is all the same, so I have no choice, and I go ahead and buy it. I will probably, and then think about this. Um, what about a car? You want to get a car, but there's only one car company, and only one car model that they're offering you. Think also about a situation where there's only one telephone company and only one telephone company and only one handset that you could possibly get from, uh, from this telephone company. Can you imagine that world? Can you imagine a world where you have no choice, where you just have to accept what the producer gives you because he's the only one there? Okay. That is the problem with this country. The missing ingredient in the Philippines is competition. Okay. Now, what does competition do? What is the benefit of having competition? And why is it essential in an economy? Especially one where we tell people we are a market economy, we are capitalist, we're trying to, uh, you know, we're all go negotio and entrepreneurship and all that blah, blah, blah. Okay? But all behind the scenes, there's actually no competition. There is nothing really driving a true entrepreneurial movement. This is because there is no competition in the Philippines. What does competition do? Okay. Competition, next slide, gives us choice. Now, when you have a choice, this is what happens. Let's say the car company. Now, another car company comes in. And before, you had no choice but to accept the car model as they gave it to you. Poor quality, maybe. Safety is also a bit off. And you just have to accept it because that's the only car you could get. Now, if another car company comes in and he says, well, sir, why do you still stick to that model when you can get this model? It's better, safer, and cheaper. And that's what happens when the choice comes in. And then there's a contest between the two, trying to outdo each other for your benefit. And that, simply put, is what competition is about. What it does is it lowers prices and forces those who produce and sell to sell at a better quality and to make available even more choices. And more importantly, because you become more efficient, you start thinking, maybe I can do this better. Maybe I can find a way to improve on the product and make life better for the consumer, make life better for the person who's buying this product from me. And so that drives a force what we, of what we call dynamic efficiency. A dynamic efficiency is not static. What it does is it leads you to innovation. It leads you to try and discover new ways of doing things, new ways of improving the product, 
and it takes a life of its own. And that is why in competitive economies, you will see a lot of innovation. Silicon Valley is all about competition, about people trying to outdo themselves. And so Apple, although it's the leader and the other, you know, other companies in, in Silicon Valley are leaders, they have to stay on top of the game. They're not there in some static, undynamic situation. They're actually under threat of being taken over by the next kid on the block who wants to take over that position. And so that drives more innovation, it drives more improvement. Now what about the small players? The small players can now come in because they are, they are, more, uh, they are more able to, uh, to, to come up with these new ideas. They have uh, less baggage, they have uh, less restrictions. So the, the small players now have that, that advantage towards innovation. So entrepreneurship and innovation is, a, is an effect of competition. It is what is going to drive new ideas, new ways of doing things, new technologies. And with that, competition ultimately leads to development and prosperity. Development because now you are giving a chance to others who previously didn't have a chance to come into the market to introduce new products and new services, to innovate, to invent, to create, and thereby giving more opportunities to those who did not have it before. So you are, in effect, democratizing economic opportunity. And prosperity is now available to anyone who's willing to go into this competitive situation and produce something new and something exciting, something that will attract the consumer to your product. Competition rewards those who take risks, those who are willing to invest, who are willing to bring in their, their creativity, their intellectual property into this new product or service. It does not distinguish, okay? Competition does not distinguish whether you are brown or white or yellow, okay? Does not, does not ask what family you're from, okay? Or that you're an A-lister, or that you're on Tatler, okay? It doesn't ask that. Competition rewards those who are willing to get into competition. Competition punishes, however, those who go against competition, those who want to monopolize the market, those who want to prevent new entrants, who want to make sure that the consumer only buys my product, my service, and I'll do everything within my power to do it. Competition punishes those types. And that's where we get to the problem and the challenge that I'm going to throw out to everyone here. Uh, I hope I'm not uh, boring you with this, with this topic. This is not a concept. This is not a theory that is confined only for, you know, to economists or lawyers or something that we're academically discussing. This is something that affects your very life, your everyday life depends on this. And if you're wondering why this country is so effed up, it's because we don't have this. We don't have competition. What we have is anti-competition. That is the name of the game in the Philippines. Anti-competition is the very business model that the most powerful firms, families, and individuals are using to accumulate wealth, okay? Because if you look at the Philippines, we're not really a poor country. You see all that wonderful growth rate, 6.9, 6.1, you know? But this is aggregated. And in fact, we suffer from this dilemma called jobless growth. There is growth. There's actually money being made, being created but nobody's getting any new jobs. Nobody, okay, the 90%, their lives aren't improving. But, sorry, the 99%, the 1%, okay, the 1% is getting really, really rich. Okay? And they get rich, not through innovation, 
not through international competitiveness. They get rich at your expense. They get rich by making sure that they can overprice their product and, make, and cap, you know, capture you as consumers. So you have no choice. I can't go anywhere. He's the guy who dominates everything. He owns this, he owns that. Okay? Everything is somehow connected. Okay? And that's the business model. That is how the Philippines has been run. That is how the Philippines has rewarded those who could capture markets for centuries. We're talking Spanish period to the present. It hasn't changed. People have changed. Families have changed. Nationalities or ethnicities have changed. But it's the same situation. It's anti-competition. It is avoiding at all costs somebody else coming in, especially from another country, and challenging them with new ideas, challenging them with lower prices. It's terrible. What, won't it be terrible if, if these companies that dominate our economy had to lower their price? Poor guys, no? And uh, who would benefit? Well, maybe the 99% who've been suffering all these centuries, right? Maybe they would have a chance. Maybe if you lowered the price of food by just 10%, 20%, it would alleviate poverty in such a big, such a big extent that, that it would have uh, an unspeakable impact. No? But no, the price of food is the most expensive here. And many other products and services are the most expensive here in the Philippines. It is because there is no competition. And what, is, what does anti-competition do? Well, unfortunately, it's not about just making money. It's about making money at the expense of somebody else. If you have the power, you can now extract the wealth by overpricing, by capturing the market, and concentrating the wealth in a particular set of individuals. I was thinking 1% of the population, but they say it's even less than that, are actually taking advantage of this. The rest, okay, less than 9% is middle class. Middle class, that's us. Salaried individuals, people who work for this, less than 1%. And then the rest, suffering unspeakable poverty concentrating here in Metro Manila and cost you know suffering untold misery and it just gets worse and worse the only country in ASEAN where the majority's way of life is getting worse in all the other countries in the ASEAN the life the quality index for their lives is improving here it's getting worse what's happening okay now to be able to make sure that you've captured that market, well, one is, of course, your dominance in the market, meaning your sheer size makes you a threat to anyone who wants to come in. Second, well, I can also get together, if there are two or three of us, we'll get together, probably play golf, and say, hmm, why don't we fix the price and make sure these consumers have no choice but to go to either you, me, him. Then maybe you can share the profits. That's called cartel or price fixing. Okay? And there could be other permutations of this. But worse is you use the government to make sure that you've got that dominant market position. And how do you do it? Corruption. Where does corruption, where is corruption leading to? Corruption is just ensuring that you have a monopoly profit. It could be a monopoly profit with a government institution. It could be the ability to steal the taxpayer's money. It could be just simply making sure that you're the only company that's in that particular industry or sector. And nobody knows what's happening. It's money going out. If they're making that much money at our expense, so we're talking hundreds of billions, it's so easy to just pass out a few millions here and there. So corruption becomes part and parcel. It's institutionalized into the whole bureaucracy. It is institutionalized into society itself. You come up with this 
horribly corrupt society. Everyone's expecting a payoff here or there because somebody up there wants to make sure that they're in power. And of course, that leads to bad governance. I don't care about these people. Okay? I don't care that the government is supposed to be set up for us, the community. It's not set up for us. It's set up for them. It's set up for those who long ago established their monopoly control over this country. And I'm so sorry <laughs> that I'm, 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 I'm making it uh, it's such a negative thing to do uh, in this nice afternoon with you nice folk. So let's give a little bit of optimism and hope. Well, the hope will only come from you, from us. Okay. We cannot expect this country to improve if we don't jump in and do something about it. And a lot of do-gooders have had all kinds of great ideas about how we can alleviate poverty, help people. Honest people, um, people with integrity, people you, you really cannot question, uh, come up with all kinds of great ideas. But unfortunately, they fall short of really addressing the root of the problem. The, 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 the fundamental issue okay, is about competition. It's that this country has been set up as an anti-competition country, and you have to turn that around. Like I said, you can come up with all your charitable events okay, and do all your charitable activities and you still won't have an impact. And chances are you would have gotten the charity anyway from the people who stole from us in the first place. This, the difficult situation is, and I realize this, me as a lawyer works for them, you work for them or your parents work for them, it becomes very difficult. You have to be very polite. And some of these people are actually nice people. Okay. When you talk to them, they're very personable, very nice. But, but they've gotten used to this way of life, and we have to break it down. We've got to smash it and, and change the whole situation. We've got to come up with a, new, a whole new economy based on a different model, a model based on competition. And that's, that's what I'm trying to drive. We need a national competition mindset, a collective mindset of us saying we need competition. Now, chances are, anyway, the world is changing. And the world, I think the world knows that we're sort of this pocket of monopolies here in, in, in Southeast Asia. And maybe there will come a time it will become fashionable for all of us to say there must be competition. We have to fight for it. Now, you can help me out also. I'm trying to pass a law. Okay? It's been very difficult. It's taken me 21 years and six Congresses to try and push for the competition law. What is the competition law? It just simply gives us the power to complain when, there, when we see an anti-competitive act, either abuse of dominance, horizontal, vertical, and other agreements among companies, and also watching out for mergers. Okay? Who's going to watch out for the next big merger in telecoms? Well, the next big merger in telecoms will result in only one company. Okay? Supposedly, the NTC looked into it, but we don't have an institution that stands there and protects competition and says, no, you can't merge, because if you merge, you're going to create a situation that will be very harmful for the rest of society and the consumers particularly. And that's what I would need your help for. Constitutional reform is also a given because we have to re-engineer and restructure the whole country towards competition. And a constitution that concentrates all the power in a place along the river Okay, uh, somewhere in Manila, okay. uh, and concentrates all the power here in Manila rather than spreading it out to the rest of the country doesn't also make for good form, doesn't, doesn't encourage competition and innovation. 
So we have to really look at the Constitution. Okay? So, and finally, integration. When I say integration, it's the world. What's happening in the world today? The world's getting smaller. The world is getting, you know, is coming together. And we're, we're left out of it because we're, as like I said, a pocket of protection and mon monopolies benefiting only a few people. Now, the chances are, chances are maybe if that AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community, kicks in and other regional groupings and other means of integrating with other economies, it will highlight the dysfunctions of this economy. It will force more competition. It will allow us, gives, gives us some support for, for the revolution. So you have to go for integration. And, um, and I think that's it. Okay. So think about it. Think carefully about competition or anti-competition situations in your everyday life. Be conscious of it. When you go, go to a store, ask yourself, am I being given a fair shake here? Am I given that power of choice? This competition is about the power of choice. It's simplified, but you see the power of this concept, what it can do, what it can harness. And I'm looking forward to the new world. I hope I can still live to see it. The new world, uh, the new Philippines, driven by competition, powered by innovation and creativity by you, the next generation. Okay. I am Tony Abad, and I am for competition and integration in a bright new world. Thank you.